In this video, we'll show you one of many extension points and ways to customize Sitefinity from a developer standpoint. Sitefinity provides plenty of functionalities out of the box, but developers often need to customize their instance so they can match business requirements and needs with custom functionality. This time around, we'll be creating a new MVC widget to display marketing news on our site. Let's jump off with what you'll need to start developing and customizing Sitefinity. In this video, we'll be using Visual Studio 2019. Depending on the version of Sitefinity you're working with, the supported versions of Visual Studio will vary accordingly. Check the Sitefinity documentation for a full compatibility list of versions. So, pause this video while installing the proper version of Visual Studio on your machine. Once you have Visual Studio up and running, Open the Extensions menu and get the V6 extension for Sitefinity. With the help of this handy plugin, you save tons of time through its project and MVC widget scaffolding capabilities. Let's go step by step through the process of creating an MVC widget. First up, right click the MVC folder and follow the sequence Add, Sitefinity, Widget. Next, think of a name for your widget. In this demo, we'll use Marketing News, since this is what the widget will do. Finally, reload the solution to add the widget to it. All set, you have a scaffolded widget with all its basic properties added to the structure. Let's look in more detail into the widget structure itself. A Controllers folder with a controller, a Models folder with a model, and a newly created subfolder in the Views folder. Keep in mind that each new MVC widget needs to follow a naming convention so that its model, views, and controller are properly functioning within the Sitefinity MVC ecosystem. Okay, time for some best practices and basics to abide by when creating a widget. Both the model and the controller are public classes. The controller class inherits the controller base class which in turn is part of the system.web.mvc. With the help of the controller toolbox item attribute and without any additional coding, your newly created widget is automatically registered in the widget toolbox and users can simply drag and drop it on their pages. You can either place your widget in an existing toolbox section or you can make up your own. In this example, we'll create a new section and name it Custom Widgets. Since the controller and model are public classes, any of their public properties will also be displayed in the Widget Designer. Before we go on, let's conduct a simple test. Build the project and let it load up. Open a new page and there you go. Your new widget is in the Custom Widget section and you can drag and drop it on your page. For the time being, our widget isn't doing anything. Now let's get our hands dirty with the Sitefinity native API. We'll use the API to retrieve news items and dynamic content items. Since Sitefinity is using the provider model, you don't need to execute any raw SQL queries to retrieve data from the database. If you want to dig deeper into more complex API examples and syntax, you can always refer to the Sitefinity documentation. For the purpose of our marketing count widget, we'll work with the News API and the Dynamic Modules API to get the news items and the dynamic items of the type Showcases. As the widget name suggests, we'll be interested only in the content that's classified under the Marketing Taxonomy. Let's start with the simpler task of using the News API. Simpler because the News module is built in, that is, a static module that exists in every project, so its API is quite the standard one. So to initialize the manager, we use a dependency injection and then retrieve the default provider. And you can also resort to Visual Studio's autocomplete function to automatically include all required using namespaces to your code. On the provider side, we'll use the getNewsItems method and subsequently filter the retrieved collection of news based on the taxonomy criteria. Finally, we'll store the filtered collection in the marketing news variable. 
The Dynamic Content API is a bit trickier since you need to specify the actual type of the Dynamic Module, namely Showcases. Check out the Module Builder section in the Administration menu to explore some API samples of this Dynamic Module. OK, once you get to the proper Dynamic Content type, you need to filter the list based on the Marketing Taxonomy, just like we did with the News Items list. Since news and the showcases share a common interface, we can combine them, so we can sort them by last publication date. Further, we can abstract just the required properties and pass them to the template, so that only the parts of the content we want are displayed on the front end. To do that, create a new Marketing View model and simply pass it to the view. This view model is to display the latest three pieces of content published and give the total number of content items. Keep in mind that to display the data in a format of choice, you need to edit the view as well. Time to test again. Build the project, reload it, and check out your new widget. To finalize our widget, instead of hard coding the top three items, you can delegate the sorting task to a property that the content author can control and modify. Simply create a new public integer property and plug it into the logic. A final test, and we're done. Reload the project once again. To open the widget designer, click Edit and enter the value that defines the number of content items displayed by the widget, say, 5. And the changes are immediately in effect. You probably need to see more so we suggest you explore all the MVC samples in our GitHub repository. Test them out and get fresh ideas for your new widgets. Thank you for watching.